Now, we have another speaker coming up right now on stage, and he's going to talk to you about the art of due diligence, evaluating startup investment opportunities. His name is Maximilian Lautenschläger, and he's a venture developer, investment advisor, and co-founder at Iconic Lab. He's also an advisory board member for MLP Finanzdienstleistungen, and as a venture developer and blockchain enthusiast, he has a lot of experience in consulting and company building in fintech and private equity. And for those of you who don't know Iconic Lab, it is an accelerator for blockchain-based startups. Now, he's also an advisor uh, for projects and works with the German Blockchain Association. So, welcome. Thomas. Hello, everyone. Are you having a good time at Block Show? Really good. I'm also having a good time. Very, very exciting event. So today, I'm going to talk about um, the art of due diligence with you. Um, so my name is Max, as uh, mentioned before. I'm managing partner of Iconic Lab together with Patrick Lowry. We are an ICO um, accelerator for blockchain and crypto startups. And for our investors, we are a decentralized venture capital club. Before I did that, I worked in venture capital and private equity. I worked in the fintech space. And yeah, today I want to give you some insights into our due diligence process and how it fits into our ecosystem. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the due diligence itself, how you could maybe do that for yourself and what is really important. Secondly, how it fits into our ecosystem. Third of all, what we achieved to date as Iconic Lab. And then actually, I'm very happy that we will make a very big exclusive block show announcement today about Iconic Lab, so you can be excited. So first about due diligence. So I will start with the ugliest slide I've ever built. I mean, yeah, if you want to fit 60 bullet points uh, on one slide, that's quite challenging. But anyways, that's how it is. So it's actually a best practice out of the venture capital space. I mean, me being um, a Kaya, Patrick being a CPA, we are, of course, are very, very familiar with due diligence. This is how it looks like. There's just an additional layer for, of course, blockchain use case and for the tokenomics themselves. I can't talk about all of those points, unfortunately, now with you, but I will pick the most important ones and we'll bring it to a high level. So, first of all, I mean, I've been traveling to Korea, to Malaysia, to the US, everywhere in Europe, and everywhere I saw the same problem, that a lot of projects are not solving any problem, and they don't need a blockchain. So first of all, you should really ask, is this a problem that they are solving, or is it purely a hype? That's really important. Do they need a blockchain layer that this uh, model actually makes sense? And secondly, does a token actually support the decentralized character characteristics of the blockchain use case. And always look for a prototype, of course, because a prototype or a proof of concept just shows you that something is there, there was money before, and they really have like skin in the game. Secondly, team and advisors. Very important point. I don't know how it was for you, but when I started, like, yeah, two or three years back in blockchain, no one in my LinkedIn network had actually experience in blockchain. But today, they all have like five, six, seven years of experience in blockchain. That's something I would definitely have a look at. So really verify whether this is true. You as a retailer or retail investor, you, have, you don't have the advantage as we have that you cannot call former employers and ask, is it actually true that he had like five years back a blockchain role in this company? We can do that. But if you have the chance to verify the backgrounds, that's always very helpful. Advisors. I mean, how does this whole advisor thing work? We get mails every day from advisors, from the best advisors all over the globe. They say, yeah, you just have to pay us 30 Ether or something and we will be on your advisory board. That's the first thing. So it's pay for being advisor. So don't take it too serious if projects have great advisors because they really have to work with the projects themselves. And secondly, often projects just claim that they have several advisors. Um, and yeah, be very, very careful there. Third of all, it can be the best team, it can be the best idea, really something that I really love, but they don't have a go-to-market strategy. That's also a big issue. So how do they actually bring all the power on the street? 
How do they really execute? I think that's a very, very important point here. Um, and if they can't execute it, I mean, one of the statistics I'm very sure you just read on LinkedIn or somewhere else on Medium is that 90% of the startups are not able to actually uh, meet the expectations or to bring you the deliverables that they promised they would do. That's bad execution. So really make sure that there are milestones that are realistic and you trust the team to actually execute what they were promising. And of course, the business model themselves. Is it B2B, B2C, B2B2C, and uh, whatever, all those words. So does it really make sense? Are they, is it monetizable? Will they generate revenues? I mean, you always have to differentiate one thing, maybe, if you evaluate an ICO. You have the blockchain protocols, infrastructures, and you have business models, you have decentralized applications. For the infrastructure, it can be also, it doesn't have to be monetizable. It can be completely open source. There can be a hype, and you, as, as an investor, can earn a lot of money there. But for a de decentralized application, especially long term, when we are seeing more and more security launches, always look for the monetization as well. Because of the, at the end of the day, they have to generate revenues that they will survive, and only if they survive, the token will survive and will ri rise in value as well. Very important, of course, legal tax and regulatory issues. So for us and our startups, it's absolutely, it has to be the case that you have an international legal team which all, and tax team which also de deals with uh, VAT and other taxes and that you are talking to the regulator. Because you as an investor, if the ICO is not regulated or they don't have an approval for it, then you might be the one losing your money because the ICO will be forbidden after a while. And then you are losing your well-deserved and earned money just because they didn't get regulatory approval. Too many ICOs, too many teams think today that ICOs is just a way for quick fundraising. And that's not a good thing, so be very careful there as well. Afterwards, I mean, once you invested in an ICO, make sure that you really monitor your investment, that you monitor what kind of milestones are they actually achieving, where are they standing. I think that's very important. And the helpful thing for that is, so things I would look at is, do they actually have a lockup period, the team itself? Do they have to hold the token long term? That's a very, very good signal. And do they have a wallet tracker? Because we, for example, in all of our startups will have a wallet tracker. So we will combine all the crypto expenditures with the regular bookkeeping, combine that, and you will always see all the expenditures that we are having. It's full transparency, full disclosure, even more than in the traditional world. And startups which are not willing to do that, I would be careful. Research resources. It's actually a slide I didn't know if I even want to share it because I don't trust those things mostly. And I think you should be very careful. But somewhere you have to get the information because you don't have the access as we have, of course. Of course, go to list and rating sites, yeah, like ICO Bench and other players. Go to community channels where you get a feeling, are there only bots, only paid users? Is there interaction? Is someone hyping the project? Who's standing behind it? Who's um, supporting it? And stuff like that. And then expert analysis, like Smith & Crown, for example, or Coindesk. What do they write about it? or at the end of the day, become part of our club because we just source the best project and we do our due diligence. And that's actually where I'm coming to our ecosystem. So you can see that a lot of um, startups are applying to our program. Till date, that we're like close to 400 applications. And we do th that level of due diligence that I just showed to you. And then only the best ones get picked. We put our own money to develop the ICO, regulatory compliant, legal compliant, high quality, and then you, as an investor into our token, would get the exclusive pre-sale. So the highest bonus always goes to our investors into the due diligence process. And then afterwards, there's the ICO. And so why is due diligence in our process, in our business model, actually so important? It's because of our tokenomics. Because, I mean, every ICO pool basically could issue a token where he says, OK, you get the highest bonus into certain projects. Yeah. Um, I think everyone could do that, theoretically. But we really perform the level of due diligence as necessary that you don't have to worry too much about it. You get the information, you get the due diligence report, and based on that information, you can, you can actually decide, so it's optional, whether you want to invest or not. And it's not a voucher, it's a lifelong right you are having. 
And this is how it then uh, broke down for our first batch. Our first batch, we selected five companies, so 165 applications. We had personal conversations uh, with 80 of them, uh, follow up and deep dive where we thought, okay, it's a good idea. We like the team, but we have to do more due, dig due diligence, 50. And then the real due diligence process, collecting legal documents, making reference calls to former employers and so on, were only 18. And then those five startups were chosen. So I think if you want to prove whether we are just claiming to make due diligence or we are really good in doing it, look at the startups. I'm 100% convinced of all of them. You can see them in the hall at our exhibition stand. I'm really convinced that we really chose the best ones out of our applications. You can also see our first track record. That was the first due diligence we made. It was Unibright. Um, they were sold out even before the uh, sale closed. I think that shows that we are doing good work here. And yeah, what about us, actually? Where are we standing? So we raised uh, $2 million in our private and public pre-sales. We already launched the accelerator in Germany. It will soon, it will be launched in uh, the US, in New York. We already have a management team there. And then in November, it will be launched in Singapore. We are working on a 100 million EOS fund exclusively together with uh, FinLab, where we invest into the equity of blockchain projects, which will use EOS. And we have a VC investment from FinLab again, themselves. We have 30,000 community members, very, very good ICO um, bench rating and stuff like that. This is our team. So me, I'm a sourcing director, managing partner. Patrick, our CEO and managing partner, comes from um, PwC. He um, audited private equity funds before, launched his own venture capital fund. Dominic Ward, who leads an accelerator program in the US, will be our US managing partner. Or Barmat and Sandris Murins both had blockchain startups before. Arapta Zudir, who did marketing for startups in Spain before. And Lukas Muzialski, who worked in private equity investment banking. So you can see that we all quit very, very good jobs to be in that space. And we are true believers. We really believe that everyone who's in this room is a believer in the future and that we are living the future right now. Our, yeah, our advisor, but I told you, very careful with advisors before, right? <laughs> no, but actually they are all working with us. We are very proud with them. And also our partners, which are supporting us uh, basically every day. Yeah, EOS, Token as a Service, the GBX, Sentiment, and um, also a lot of um, academia actually working with us. And yes, our ICO, our public one is um, ending today. Um, the private sale will go until the mid of June. If you're interested, let me know. And now it's actually time for the announcement. So I really want to um, yeah, bring our uh, CEO and managing partner, uh, Patrick, on the stage. He will t talk about one new exciting thing, and uh, Victor as well, who is the CEO of uh, Beta Data. Uh, thanks, Max. Uh, uh, so how is everybody doing? And everyone enjoying Block Show? Oh, come on, let's hear it. Everyone get a little bit louder. Who's enjoying Block Show? <laughs> there we go. Hey, hey. <laughs> 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 there, I like whoever's in the back there. So basically, hopefully Max was able to impart to you the level of professionalism through this due diligence protocols that we're bringing to the uh, crypto space through our leveraging our backgrounds as venture capitalists. But Iconic Lab doesn't want to stop there. We don't want to just disrupt the VC space, but rather we're looking at bringing professionalism to asset management in crypto the world over. And we're very excited today to announce the uh, launch of Iconic Funds. Iconic funds will be uh, br bringing professional management to the space, and we're doing so through passively managed index funds powered by beta data. This will be the first methodologically sound index funds created by individuals that have uh, a long background in indexation to bring the ability to diversify any individual's holding of crypto assets. And now I'd like to introduce Victor, the CEO of Beta Data, who's going to speak a little bit about the methodologically sound processes that they've developed within their platform. Thank you, Patrick. So let me start by saying that at Beta, we're very happy to be partnering with the guys from Iconic in order to help them build the first uh, fully regulated series of index funds. Now, at Beta, we are a team of senior professionals from backgrounds in the exchange world, in the indexation space, you need the as in the hedge fund uh, space. And what we decided is that we wanted to bring enterprise-grade methodologies from capital markets into the crypto and the digital asset space. So when we all go out and build our indexes, we start first with data. 
We do not uh, take the data from the usual price aggregators out. We just collect all the trade data, and we make sure that we apply the right algorithms to ensure that the data is really representative of the market conditions that a trader is facing out in the market. Then this data gets used as an input in our index engine to then calculate and disseminate in real time a series of index strategies. Our indexes are completely transparent, so there's no black pots. Our methodologies are well documented and are available for everyone publicly. And also, our indexes have been optimized for execution. So uh, we wanted to make sure that any asset manager or investor that tracks our index can go out to the market and can replicate the strategy without problems. Now, I don't want to talk too much about performance, but I think the main message here is that invested through our indexes and through the series of index funds that are going to be launched by Iconic gives you, on one hand, a diversified exposure, which is great from a risk management perspective. But on the other hand, it also gives you the potential for higher returns than just going out and selecting individual investments. So for investors that want exposure to the digital asset space but do not want to spend the time cherry picking which is the token that is going to bring returns, this is a very sound proposition. Then, as I said, the team of Beta is very professional. So all of our guys um, have been senior managers in hedge funds, in, in large exchanges, in large index providers. So our customers can be sure that anything coming out of Beta is of the highest quality. So if you are looking forward to issue an investment product or you just need better quality market data, do not hesitate on contacting us. Now I'm leaving you again with Patrick so he can introduce you a little bit to the index token that these guys are about to launch. So. At Iconic, we're always looking to innovate uh, in the asset management space. And we believe that we've successfully disrupted the venture capital space through the use of our ICNQ token by empowering individuals to leverage our backgrounds as VCs, providing those typical quality assurances that a VC will provide with their fund, but still offering a decentralized mechanism to allow retail and institutional partners to invest into the companies that graduate our accelerator program. So when we're looking at this asset management platform that we've been looking to develop, uh, we were thinking about ways that we can uh, innovate how typical passive asset management works. And we're very happy to announce what will be the launch of Iconic Lab's very next product, the Index Token, where the holders of the Index Token will have the exclusive ability to have management fee-less subscriptions to every fund that is launched by Iconic Lab. I'm going to say that again to underline how important this is. There will be no management fees charged to the holders of the index token for the lifelong subscription that you make to the index funds that will be launched by Iconic Lab. Now, we already have a very massive community, and we want to give back to that community as well, too. So we will be airdropping these tokens, a large portion of them, to the ICNQ token holders. These will show up in your wallets tomorrow morning, as soon as you, uh, not tomorrow morning, but later on, as soon as we launch the token sale later this summer. And this allows for any individual to participate in exposure in the crypto and digital asset marketplace, to participate in the index engines developed by Beta and through the funds that will be launched by Iconic Lab later this year. With Iconic Lab and Iconic Funds, we are changing the face of asset management and bringing professionalism to the crypto working space. i really like to thank you all for your time. We will be sticking around all afternoon to answer any questions that you have, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of Block Show. Thank you. Yeah.